So we were played. Delta played us. Delta played us. They promised $3,000. Guys, let me first apologize for the poor quality of this video. My camera was just not having it. And also for the background noise, you will hear um, the middle and towards the end, my daughter was making some popcorns. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed like the giving video. giving up on shooting you. this video because this is like the fifth time. I'm not sure if it's my camera. It's kind of like showing blurry. I don't know what's happening. So let's get into the video. I will make it short. We'll try. Yeah, literally this is the fifth time I'm shooting it. So um, I want to see if it's not blurry anymore because it, my camera wasn't focusing. I've kind of like tried everything. If you know what to do, please leave it in the comment section down below. And with that, welcome back to my channel, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Nandika. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. It's great to have you. Now, if you're a regular subscriber, thank you so much for stopping back by. Now, today's video is literally just a rant on my traveling. Okay, so if you traveled lately, um, like internationally, so you'll know what's going on with the airports and everything, it's an absolute mess. So, I'd just like to summarize my travel okay so it actually was like over two days two yeah two days it was quite a long um, travel anyway so in this travel i also lost my phone okay so that's where it all started i was checking in and i had to move um some of my luggage because i had two huge bags and then i had a hand luggage and a purse so I had to move one, um, some of my clothes from one luggage because they were too heavy, because it was overweight, and then move it to the other luggage, right? Because, you know. Firstly, I was actually prepared to pay, and um, this woman was like, oh, you pay $150, I don't want you to pay. And I was literally, like I said, I was literally just prepared to pay. And she was like, no, no, you don't have to, you know, you can make it work. So I moved some of my clothes, obviously, right there on the floor, moved some of my clothes from one luggage to the other. And then um, she was like to me, whatever is excess, if it's still left, you can actually move it to your hand luggage and then we can check your hand luggage in complimentary. I was like, but that still makes it overweight because I'm allowed a total amount um, of 40 kgs, right? A total check-in. So if it, if I add my hand luggage, it will be more than 40 kgs. That didn't make any sense. But anyway, I was like, no, 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 it's okay. Um, I'm not checking my hand luggage because what was in my hand luggage, I needed to make sure that I do not lose it, basically. So... Anyway, I did that and eventually I was like three pounds because it was in pounds, so I was three pounds overweight and it was okay. And then two hours later, I discovered um, that I didn't have my phone, I lost my phone. So that's where it all started. And then I went to, um, the lost and found desk was closed for the day. How does that happen? I don't know. It was during the week and it was in the afternoon. Anyway, the, it was closed and I ended up getting their number um, because they had their cards, I ended up getting their number to try and contact them and I still have not been able to get hold of them and obviously I will not find my phone now. Anyway, that's where it all started. And then I was also going to be um, transiting through Atlanta Airport, right? So anyway, I checked my baggage straight through to South Africa. Okay, so because I didn't want to worry about anything about my luggage, I didn't want to grab my luggage in Atlanta and then check it now. I didn't want that. And plus, um, I live in PE, right? In Kamehameha. So um, my flight from Atlanta was going to get to Johannesburg late, which means that um, I was not going to get a flight from Johannesburg to PE on the same day. So I booked a hotel to stay overnight in Johannesburg, which I thought was a great idea because I just needed to chill a bit and then fly the next day to Port Elizabeth. White got the story, fantastic. Okay, I get to Atlanta, um, you know, it's quite a lot of people. A flight was for 7.30 in the evening. Stay 7.30, no, not boarding, boarding gates. You know, everybody's like packed with so many people. It was quite, a, obviously looked like a quite a fully booked flight. And you know, um, before traveling, um, 
I've been hearing stories about people losing their luggage, their flight being cancelled or not getting their baggages. It was just happening a lot. Also a friend of mine was flying from Europe as well. Um, so it was just quite a lot going on. And then my mother was also telling me about, uh, about our popcorns. Somebody's making popcorns. I do apologize. Um, about all the luggage that I left in Heathrow Airport and everything that was happening. I'm like, oh, it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. Absolutely not. In Jesus' name, mm -mm. no problem. Atlanta 7.30 comes, which is supposed to be our flight time. No, nope, still waiting. And then they have changed the time to 8 p.m. Okay, no problem. So now we're waiting. Nothing is happening, you know, and no communication, not much communication. And before it gets to 8 o'clock, I think it was late, like just before 8 o'clock, and then they start making an announcement. Oh, um, we come aboard our flight now because this flight is overbooked, which is happening a lot. It happens, it happens with airlines. They overbook flights all the time, right? This flight is overbooked. We need a couple of people to, um, you know, to lose their seat for today, and we'll fly them the next day. We'll book them an overnight stay in a hotel, we'll pay for their meals for today and we'll compensate them. I think they were going to compensate them $800, $800, no problem, fine. So I'm like standing there and waiting, I think it was two or three people that actually um, came forward and then 8 o'clock came, time was changed to 8.10 or something, still nothing. And then they just made an announcement again. They kept making an announcement. Oh, we still need more people. And then they were like, oh, we need 25 people. And we'll compensate them. The price kept going up. This is Delta Airway, by the way. Delta Airways. Mm. Went up to 1,200. And then it went up to 1,500. And then I was like chatting, you know, you're just waiting for the flight. And you end up, there's a lot of people. So you end up just chatting to people. And I was chatting, and this person is like, this guy's like, oh, uh, if I had the opportunity to do it, I'll do it. But the only problem is I have to fly through to Namibia. I think I was going to Namibia. I have a meeting in Namibia, so maybe you can try it. I was like, I was like no, 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 I just want to get home. By then, I just wanted to get home. He's like, no, no, you just try it. You know, you, you get 1,500. And I was like, you know what? Um, I won't miss my flight anyway because I'm flying the next day from Johannesburg to PE, right? Only thing I'll lose is a hotel, and let's see if Delta will pay for my hotel. I went to them, they're like, yeah, 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 we'll pay. So a couple of people, and oh no, and then they, before I went in, they raised it up to 2,000, and so there was a couple of us. It was quite a, a huge group. Okay, so we went forward, and they took our names down, and blah, 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 right? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Anyway, by this time it was after nine o'clock or something. Yeah, it was after nine o'clock, so everybody was just tired, which just needed to, you know, they just needed to leave. And they would not leave until, because they kept saying, oh, we need the numbers, we need more numbers. So, okay, fine, let me just put down my name. So I went and put down my name, and there was a couple of people as well from South Africa, but also from the US and stuff. And then, they were like, oh, we still need a few more people. We need about five people. And this was before 10 o'clock now. We need, no, yeah, it was like 9.30 or something. We need five more people and the price has just gone up and the amount has just gone up to $3,000 per person. So eventually five people, five more people came forward and they put their names down and then again we waited for a couple of minutes, like 20 minutes or so I believe. It was like a couple of minutes of waiting before boarding, right? So they finally announced that boarding starts, so everybody boarded. So they said everybody that volunteered must stay on one side. Or oh, they did say this, this is going to be in a form of vouchers or um, American Express um, e-card. Right, okay, fine. So we all waited on one side and they and started boarding the flight. So they boarded the flight, everybody was complete and everybody boarded the flights and there was like 30 of us who volunteered waiting on one side. I was like before 10 o'clock, maybe 10 minutes or five minutes before 10, this guy just comes up just casually and says, oh, we don't need any more people so you can all board the plane now. And we're like, 
pizza? What did you just say? Oh, we don't need you anymore. So you can all board the flight so we can, um, so the flight can leave. <laughs> okay. Like we were like in disbelief. Like what happened to 30 people that you needed? Like the flight was delayed over three hours because we needed 30 people. And now suddenly, just casually, oh, you know, we don't need it. Oh, I just took my bag and it was like, you know, what? let's just go. So, and then there were some people that were actually wandered off. Um, but as we were boarding, they find they came back or they found them anyway. So they're like, oh no, we just needed two people. How did we get from two to 30? I don't know, right? Okay, fine. So we boarded the flight and I was sitting on the plane for like 30 minutes, close to 30 to 40 minutes. I know it was over 30 minutes though. So. Oh, and then they announced, oh, we apologize for the delay. We're just um, loading luggage. So I'm thinking they took off our luggage and now they're loading them back in, right? Okay, cool. So eventually the flight leaves after 10, before 11 o'clock the flight leaves. I know we were like three and a half hours or so delayed, the delay of the flight. Eventually we left. So we got to Johannesburg, carousel waiting for our luggage. Nada. An hour. And it was so slow, like the luggage, them loading the luggage into the carousel, it was so slow. Nada, no luggage. And there was like a lot of us and we were like, uh-uh, what's going on? And it was mostly everyone that volunteered and some other people, like literally everyone that volunteered and some other people. This woman was stressing out because her chronic medication is in the hand luggage and she didn't have any because she's not allowed to take all her chronic medication with her. So, after all that, okay, we were like, right, let's go to the Delta um, desk, right? So went to the Delta desk um, at the Oartambo airport and we told them what happened. And this guy is like, oh, um, it happens a lot with airlines now. Airlines overbook and, um, oh, let me tell you. So when we get to the desk, right? So the people are ready, the minute, um, cause we're like in the queue, the minute they started reporting, the guy was like, oh, please find your names over here. Or like, huh? Oh yeah, please find your names over here. All the people that have their luggages left in Atlanta. Oh, and then they said, oh, there were 77 bags left in Atlanta. Please find your name here. So they had all the names ready of the people, the luggages that were left behind. So they already knew that, you know, whatever. So you had to find your name and, you know, and they're like, oh, your luggages will be here by tomorrow. And we're like, so what's happening? So what was this, like a play just to get our name so that our luggage, and the guy's like, oh yeah, this is what happens with airlines basically. Um, the capacity was full. It's not like they did, oh, they did have space by the way. They still had a few seats in the plane when we boarded that were empty, right? So they're like, oh no, I think it was a capacity, like the weight capacity was too much. So they needed to offload some luggages and hence why they overbooked. So they could get the luggage off. Basically, that's what happened. It was like, oh yeah, it happens a lot. So we were played. Delta played us. Delta played us, they promised $3,000. They played us. 77 banks, guys. So it was like, oh yeah, it happens. And we were like, wow. It was crazy. Guys, this this is what's happening now. It's insane. The panic. Some people had connecting flights to um, to other African part, um, parts, to other parts of Africa. And obviously they needed the luggage and some had to go back to work the next day and mm, no luggage, right? People were so upset and were like, wow, Delta did us dirty. Delta dirty. They played us anyway. Out of all of that, got to the airport. I was got to the hotel. I was so looking forward to my stay at the hotel. I booked the Marriott, no Protea, by Marriott at Kempton Park. The hotel was one thousand eight hundred for one night. Ne? That's expensive, first of all, for one night. 
okay. Anyway, so I get to the hotel. Ah, the disappointment. You know when you're looking forward to it and I booked an extra large room because I wanted a bath. I just wanted to a bath to bath and just chill. The disappointment. The maintenance, like tell me why Protea Hotel will charge such ridiculous prices per night and not maintain their rooms. Tell me. So this just, just ended my trip. It's just like, wow. First, my phone gets lost. My bags get left. I get, I, I, I'm being done dirty by Delta and now Protea Hotel. The maintenance in the room, it was horrible. The door could not close properly, the entrance door. And then the window, the cover of the window was broken. So there was wind gushing in, cold. It's winter. It was cold at night, okay? such a disappointment like I took a video but my camera again it was blurry so I'll try and insert like some pictures so I can show you what I'm talking about so let's get to this quick video so as you can see the door area is scratched and this is a door that could not close properly by the way um, because it was closed I didn't want to open it again other areas of the room I have to say were looking really good now coming to the bathroom this is the bathroom this is a bathtub I was actually uh, looking forward to. It is kind of some kind of hard plastic. It's not ceramic, it's plastic. As you can see, it had scarf marks all over, literally like all over. It had scarf marks. Very disappointing, as you can see the wall behind there. And you also had scarf marks in the shower, on the shower floor. And what is that? What is that cheap box of tissues doing right there? Like not even cover. And as you can see as well, we've got the sink that is cracked. The mirror, I have to give it to them. It's a gorgeous mirror. So the theme is like, um, like an airplane. Yeah, which is pretty good. Um, the mirror, they had a beautiful full-length mirror. Ooh, look at that underneath the mirror. Look at that skating board. Like seriously, the place was looking kind of like shabby. The room, beautiful room. The bed was comfortable, even though it had like a, a huge the area I'm pointing to, it was like slouchy. It was quite low as if somebody was only sleeping on the one side of the bed. Anyway, so they had hooks, which was nice. And that's the coffee area, which was also nice. Just a basic coffee area and a mini bar fridge. Nothing in there. Also had a hairdryer and, of course, other amenities they had. That's the desk, which was looking very nice. I loved the, the lamp, which was quite nice in there as well and your phone and everything else and then that is where you hang your clothes now let's get to this now this is the cover for the window okay look at that the cover does not close so you had this cold air coming through which was really not nice and the curtains you can see so that's basically it for the room very disappointing i have to say and then i went to have dinner because i checked in like after nine in the evening because now our flight was quite late coming in I had went I went for dinner their food though was really good like home cooked food it was amazing I'll give them that the food was great and their breakfast the next day was great as well but their rooms I'm sorry you should not be charging 1800 for such for such rooms maintain your rooms and then you can charge the price it's disappointing you are so disappointing anyway one thing though I will say we arrived safe you know had a safe trip even though it was just not one of my favorite trips but will I fly Delta again it's only if I'm booked by somebody at work or better yet I will actually find my own I don't think so because I now have been seeing what's going on with the airlines canceling of flights you know what so if you're planning on traveling overseas internationally to anywhere Please make sure you are careful on how you pack your luggage because some people don't even receive their luggage. So we were actually lucky to receive our luggage. I received my luggage, by the way, after two days, but I received it nonetheless. So just be really careful if you're traveling. Make sure you don't put anything valuable in your check-in luggage or don't uh, pack too much. You know, just, just be aware of what's happening at the airports right now because clearly I think the airlines are trying to make up for all the lost revenue during the pandemic and now they're just messing up everything. I don't know what's happening. And there's also shortages of staff because they laid some staff off during the pandemic. 
I have no idea what's going on with the airlines right now. So just be mindful when you travel, like there's a lot that's going on. There's a lot that's going on here. So yeah, that's basically, that was my trip. And I got home eventually safe and sound, but yeah, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. So I just thought I would share that update and I'm sorry if this video is blurry but like I said I don't know what's going on with my lens clearly it's my lens I tried cleaning it if you know what I need to do please leave it in the comment section down below but yeah thank you so much for listening to my rant and then you turn down in my guy and oh and then you turn down in my guy and then you turn down in my guy